Hello, hello, hello. This is the Vanilla JS podcast. I'm Chris Ferdinandi. Thanks for joining me. Today, I'm talking about how I structure my Vanilla JS projects. And this is something I get um, a fair number of emails about. I've been meaning to write an article about it for a while. Um, I just haven't gotten around to it. So I thought I might just chat about it for a little bit and explain what I do. Um, and I will eventually get around to writing that article. So um, uh, within any given script, um, any particular like plugin or little function, like the thing I have to handle MailChimp sign up, my, no, MailChimp sign ups on uh, my website, for example. Um, I typically break my code up into three sections. Up at the top um, is where I keep all of my shared variables that are used across the project. Um, Below that, I have a section for methods, and then at the very end are where I have all of my initializations and event listeners. So any code that's supposed to kind of kick off when the plugin or script loads, I will um, I will usually wrap in some sort of initialization function, which I usually call a init, and then explicitly call that down at the bottom. And it just kind of provides this more um, this more clean organized structure to my code base so that I um, can kind of quickly browse everything and know where to find um, any particular thing at any particular time. For me, it just, it results in a much more neat and organized code base, which I, um, I personally just really like. Um, within any particular function within um, my code base, I do something similar. So um, if I have a function that has variables or has some other kind of functions inside it, I, I maintain that same order. So within the function, I'll have my variables, then I'll have my methods, and then I'll have all the things that kind of need to run. Um, and just for me, it provides this very predictable, reliable structure within my code base. Um, now, on a bigger project, I will often have multiple scripts that do different things. And I try and keep those kind of separate and, and um, and discrete. So I've got these individual files with the scripts that do just one thing. So on gomakethings.com, um, I have a script that handles search. I have a script that handles MailChimp enrollments. I have a script that adds um, uh, those anchor links to each of the headings in my articles, um, where you get that little uh, you know, pound or hash symbol next to the heading that you can click to get the URL for that that particular heading and deep link into it if you wanted to. Um, and I keep each of these in separate files. And then I use Gulp, um, which is a JavaScript-based task runner that you can run from the command line to um, combine um, certain files together, minify them so it strips out any of the white space and makes all the variable names really small and spits out uh, just a much smaller file for me. Um, so I use, uh, I have a gulp boilerplate that I'll link to in the show notes that's available on, um, on GitHub that's open sourced. But um, uh, you could also use something like uh, CodeKit or Prepros if you want something that's more GUI based if you're not a command line person. I've used those in the past, they work great. Um, and so the way it works is um, any stuff that is used across multiple views or is more commonly used gets combined into a single main.js file. Um, so for me, the thing that adds those heading anchor links um, and the MailChimp signup script, that stuff gets used across many pages on my site. Those are all going to get combined into a single file. Um, and then anything that's only used on one or two views very specifically, um, for example, the search functionality is really only on the search page, um, that is going to go in its own separate file. The stuff that is used across multiple pages in that main.js file, I actually go so far as to inline directly into the markup. Um, this doesn't work for everybody, but um, within, um, within kind of a, a browser um, request and paint lifecycle. Um, there are these things called HTTP requests. Those are um, round trips that uh, the browser makes as it gets data from the server. And so if you have a file that's 28 kilobytes large, that doesn't all get sent over in a single trip from the server. Um, it comes over in these little packets that are about 14 kilobytes in size. So that particular file would take two round trips to get to you. 
I found that because of uh, my heavy reliance on vanilla JavaScript and because I tend to use JavaScript for only what's absolutely needed and lean more on CSS and HTML when I can, my overall site size is pretty small. Um, when you look at a typical HTT or HTML file on my site, the CSS markup and JavaScript for that view are under 14 kilobytes after they've been gzipped. Um, and so for that reason, I can inline everything and then the entire page, everything you need comes over in a, in a single trip. Whereas if I had external CSS and JavaScript files, it would take at least three. So you're getting all the files you need faster, which means the content can start to render even faster and it produces these really like, really fast, near instantaneous page load experiences for people who visit my sites. Um, so for that reason, I tend to inline um, all of my stuff uh, that's used across multiple views. So the main JavaScript, the main CSS files. This won't work for everybody. So if you have a lot of JavaScript, um, if you have uh, CSS and JavaScript files that with their combined weight are more than 14 kilobytes after gzipping, I would not use that approach. It's actually going to be worse for performance. Um, but for me, it actually works really well. And, uh, and I'll link an article on kind of how I set that all up um, in the show notes as well. And then for the stuff that is loaded only on specific pages, I use a, um, a conditional loading technique so that it's only loaded on the pages where it's needed. Now, because I use um, Hugo as my static site generator now, um, I can actually handle this server side where it'll conditionally say, you know, if, if this page is the search page, also load this file. But um, in kind of previous experiences, um, previous sites, other sites where I don't kind of have the benefit of that, um, I use a JavaScript based technique using um, the load.js helper function from the filament group. Uh, this is a little little tiny snippet of JavaScript. It's just 500 bytes that um, uh, allows you to conditionally load JavaScript files. And so I will use query selector to, um, to check and see if a particular DOM condition is met. So on the search page, I might say if the search form exists on this page, and then if that's true, I will use load.js to load my search JavaScript file. Um, and uh, it, it creates this really simple code splitting technique. So I don't have to mess around with something like Webpack or some other kind of bundler or module loader. Um, and for me, it's just a much more simple and elegant kind of setup. Um, and I will link in the show notes as well an article on how I handle that. Um, so I mean, that's basically it. That's my, that's my kind of approach to larger projects. I keep all of the main stuff that's used across all of my views or most of my views in a single file. Anything that's used just on one or two views in its own individual file, I use Gulp to kind of handle all of that for me. Um, and, uh, and then I conditionally load stuff um, only when it's needed, inline as much as I can um, for faster page load performance. So uh, yeah, that's it for today. Um, I'll have a whole bunch of stuff in the show notes on instructions on all the different kind of ways I approach this stuff. But that's, that's my basic, uh, basic technique here. Um, so if you want to finally master JavaScript, head over to vanillajsguides.com and check out my pocket guides and video courses. They're short, focused, and made for beginners, and you'll learn the ins and outs of a topic in under an hour. Uh, see you next time. Cheers.